Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I think there's a better lighting we have now. I don't appear like I'm glowing so much, right? Well, folks, tell me which is better, this kind of setup or the setup we've been having for the last few days. <laughs> some people some people have commented and said, Jake, you look very old in your, in your video. You're all white and glowing. Well, and they say, how do you grow all your white hair so fast? Well, it's not really all white. So this might be a more realistic kind of lighting. Uh, okay, anyway, Friday, August 21, August 21, and today marks some very uh, nice things to commemorate and to celebrate. Number one is, it is the birthday, the 92nd birthday. No, is it only the 91st? Are you sure? Okay, minus one. 91st birthday of Lola Aning Lising, our mommy's grandma and your great grandmother. So happy birthday, Lola Aning. We'll give you a call a little later today. Okay. She might still be sleeping at this hour. And then in the Philippines, they're also celebrating or commemorating the death anniversary of a uh, former senator. Ninoy Aquino, uh, who was hailed as uh, some kind of a hero in the Philippines, whose wife became a uh, president who toppled uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcos a few years later. Um, I don't particularly, I'm not particularly a fan of Nino Aquino, but uh, it is significant because um, I was then a um, student in the University of the Philippines taking up journalism, and um, I um, was tasked to cover the story of the assassination of Nino Aquino and the events that followed afterwards. So, yeah, he was shot at the airport. Uh, on August 21. So I had a, an opportunity to be up close uh, uh, as the events of that day unfolded. And that's really uh, just my association with Aquino. <laughs> of course, later on, I, I served in, the, uh, in, in some capacity in the administration of uh, his wife, uh, former President Corazon Aquino in the uh, AFTA Commission. Okay, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the Gospel commentary. Today the Gospel comes from St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. Okay, this is a short Gospel so we can read it. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, by the way, Synthetically, today is the feast of St. Pope Pius X, okay? a very, very uh, important uh, pope in the history of the Catholic Church. So anyway, uh, read, it up, read up on it, on the life of Pius X. Very inspiring, very good, very doctrinally sound uh, um, pope. And uh, anyway, today is his feast day. Going back to the gospel, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by saying, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Okay, let's put this into context. How many commandments did Moses give? How many commandments did God give through Moses for us? Ten. Ten. But since, since Moses' time, the Jews have extracted and extrapolated and expanded on those Ten Commandments that it became literally hundreds. I forgot the exact figure now, but it, it has evolved into plenty, 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 plenty of rules and so-called laws that were all uh, concocted and, and, and uh, propagated by these Pharisees okay? um, and Sadducees. So, it, the, the, uh, the uh, Jews ended up being 
uh, confused now. See? Well, so many rules now, you know, including the washing of the hands inclu before you eat, including, you know, uh, washing the cup from inside out and whatever else. All of those things and that you have to wash the head, the feet and all that before you enter the house. So many, many of those kinds of rules already that were in fact, um, you know, to the point of being uh, 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 hair splitting as to what is uh, to be moral and not moral. You know, like oh, prohibiting work on, uh, on Sabbath day. Uh, you know, you can't even take your animal out to drink water, etc. Things of the sort, right? Which our Lord also criticized uh, in some part of the gospel. So these people are already confused. What is, you know, among all of these many, 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 many rules, can you give us and tell us exactly what's the most important among all of this? He said to him, to the Sadducee, to the scholar of the law who asked him the question, this is our Lord's answer. You shall love your Lord, the Lord rather, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. The second greatest commandment is similar to that first one and what is the second greatest commandment you shall love your neighbor as yourself the whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments okay? love God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and then love your neighbor as yourself so let's try to understand what this means what might it mean to love God with all your heart your soul and your mind what does that mean what do you think that does that mean to you huh is there huh Give it your all, Sophia. Give it your all. All that you've got. All your best things in life, right? With all your heart. With all your heart. Because the heart is the symbol of all your affections. Of all the things that you love. Of all the things that you desire. Of all the things that you crave in life for. The heart is the image of that. Right? The, the heart is the image of love. That is why that's the first thing that Jesus mentions. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Right? Giving God, offering God your entire heart. That He should occupy your heart like all of the little things you desire occupy and satisfy your heart. Our Lord is telling us nothing else should occupy your heart but the Lord your God. No space in your heart should be filled up by other loves. But rather, it should be full of the love of God, giving Him all your heart. Because it is only by loving God with all your heart that you really get to love and understand what kind of love you give to others. That is why the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, is very significant. Okay? But we'll go to that later. And then he says, love your, the Lord your God with all your soul, with your entire being, your, your, with your entire life, with, with all your energy. See, soul... Uh, soul signifies that it signifies all your entire life it, your, whatever animates you eh? whatever keeps you alive which is your soul eh? give that to God you have to love God that way giving all of that to God you have to love God with all your mind your mind meaning your intellect, your will, you know, your, your, your faculties. Mind is 
signifies all of your human, intellectual, rational capabilities. And Jesus is saying you have to love God by giving him all of that. All of your faculties. All of your rationality. Meaning you have to love God not blindly but intelligently. Okay? And that means getting to know God whom you love. Because it doesn't make sense and you can't, in fact, love anything you do not know. Eh? You cannot love what you do not know. And so when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with your whole mind, it means you have to put all of your intelligence in trying to study God. In trying to understand who this being is you call God who you need to love. And that is why studying our faith is part and parcel of loving God. We cannot go around uh, 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 saying that we love God, yet we hardly know God. Yet we hardly put an effort to understand the catechism. Yet we, we, we hardly read uh, uh, what the saints have experienced about loving God. Yet we do not listen and pay attention to the magisterium of the church when the church teaches us doctrinal stuff about our God. We cannot claim to say we love God and yet we don't study God. And yet we don't understand things of God because we don't want to put our whole mind into knowing God. See? So study is very important. So when you say, uh, when Jesus says you got to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, how can we really, really, concretely, Concretely, how do we do that? What does it really mean for us in our everyday lives? For you, kids, in your everyday lives, what does it really mean to love God totally? Sometimes, as I was preparing this commentary last night, what came to my mind was, was the key up in Taekwondo. You know, we got, we got some Taekwondo masters around the table here and uh and i watch them practice and uh, and you know they, they 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 have this every time they execute certain uh, forms or patterns you know with some punches and there are certain there, there are certain points in this in this sequence of of uh, forms that they have to render what's called a key up a key up right uh, I don't know what that means anyway, whoever invented that term. But the term is used in order to signify that at this point in this pattern, you got to give it your all. Your all. That's why I say, kill, 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 kill. Anyway, that's why it is. Give it your all, right? And I would remember when the, these kids would go to their Taekwondo test. And if, if the instructor does not hear that key up, oh boy, they're in trouble. So they have to really shout it out and give it your all. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Well, you know what? When it comes to loving God, we need to give the key up. All the time. We need to give God all our best all the time. That is the measure of love. That is really the measure of love. Are you giving everything you've got to God? For example, just do your best in everything you do. Do your best. Because doing your best means you're giving it, giving it your all. You know? You're not half-hearted. You're not dragging your feet. You are not complaining when you do things. You're doing it, giving it your best, best effort. That is what it means to love God. So, for example, when you, when you study, when you study, are you really putting your whole heart and mind and soul in what you are learning? 
Are you giving it your best or are you being lazy? Are you being distracted? Are you being, uh, 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 um, eh, eh, what's that? Are you, what's going on? <laughs> are you being distracted? Are you, are you, you know, you're not concentrated when you do your school work? Then you're not doing your best. Eh? When, you, when you try to do your chores, are you really putting your best in doing your chores or you're just throwing the dishes around or you're just sweeping things under the rug or you're not, you know, are you doing your best? When you make your bed in the morning, are you doing your best? When you help your brothers and sisters in whatever things they need, are you doing your best? When you speak with people, when you, when you speak with each other and you converse with each other, when you converse with other people, are you doing your best? Do you do your best all the time? Okay, but that's only one part of the formula of giving your whole love. Okay? One part of it is doing your best. The second part of it is offering it to God. To actually offer it to God as an offering of love. Okay? That's it. That's the way. That's really the simple way of loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It is doing your best in anything human that you do. In any human endeavor, do your best. And that becomes a divine offering of love for God if you do it for love of God. See? So that's the second part. Do your best and do it for love of God. Do your best and do it for love of God. That is the way you give your whole heart, soul, and mind to God in fulfillment of this first and greatest commandment. See? Now let's go to the second part very briefly. When Jesus says, well, the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is one of the most misunderstood, uh, misunderstood parts of this commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, some people think of this as saying, well, how much do you love yourself? So you just love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Okay, how does that concretely translate into loving your neighbor? If I love myself so much that I put all the, the cosmetics in my face so I look nice or I wear the best clothes or, uh, 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 you know, I love myself so much that I just buy uh, all sorts of things that will satisfy my fancies, my passions, my ego. Or I love myself too much that I treat myself to uh, all the comforts of the, that the world can offer. Or I love myself so much that I spend on myself every dime I earn at work because I work for it anyway. I could spend it. Is that the way? So are we going to do that to our neighbor? See, is that the way, is that, is that what it means to love your neighbor as yourself? I doubt if you're going to do that, right? But you see, um, he, he, here, is, here is the way uh, this is properly interpreted. What might be, what, what are you going to do for yourself to preserve yourself? What extent are you going to go to to perpetuate the self that you are? To what extent will you go to preserve your own integrity so that nobody violates your person? What extent will you go? What things will you do to protect and defend that? Let's see. And speaking of Taekwondo, that's one reason why I made you go through Taekwondo. Huh? You don't know? I think, I think you are willing, you, you're, you're going to be willing to die and to kill for it. Right? You're willing to go up to the doors of death and the risk of dying to preserve yourself. <laughs> See the irony of that? Right? That's how much we love ourselves. We love ourselves too much that we always want to keep ourselves alive. 
right? We want to preserve ourselves. Not only our physical integrity, but our moral, intellectual, and everything else. About ourselves. That is how much we love ourselves. That we are willing to go to death to preserve this life. <laughs> right? We're willing to go to the death, even to fight for it, to preserve this life. So imagine that we're willing to die to preserve our life. Imagine the irony of that, right? <laughs> well, Mia, it's okay. You may not understand it yet very much, but you know this is this is the reality of things. Okay, you're willing to go to the death to preserve your life. Think about it. Think about it. Now, if that is how much you love yourself, that's exactly what Jesus is telling us. That's the manner by which we should love our neighbor. That is the real expression of love. And remember, our Lord himself said that. No greater love that man has than to lay down his life for others. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly what Jesus did. He laid down his own life in order to save us out of love because of the greatness of his love. And if we are to be imitators of Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's what it means to love our neighbor as ourselves. That we are willing to go to the death to preserve life. Are we willing to do that to our neighbor who we say we love? See? That's why many times when people come to me with their boyfriend, girlfriend problems <laughs> or marital problems, but before even the marital problems, boyfriend, girlfriend, I ask them one question. Are you really willing to die for this person that you say you love? Because if, if not, then you don't really love this person. You don't care enough about this person to the point that you're willing to die, to preserve his life, to, to, pre to defend him, to whatever. That's the measure of real love. It's to give up yourself, to give up your own for the benefit of the one you love. Of course, dying literally is the extreme, maybe the extreme expression of it. But we don't have to die every day to show our love for our neighbor, right? It really only means selflessness, forgetting yourself. In other words, I love myself so much that I'm willing to, de to detach myself from it and offer this love for myself to somebody else, right? Sometimes that, that requires martyr, martyrdom, like, like St. Max, Colby, whose feast day we just, we just celebrated very recently, right? What did he do? He went to the extreme of exchanging his own life to be executed by the Nazis in exchange of the life of a married man who, whose life could be preserved in order that he continues to be with his loved ones after the war. St. Max went to the extreme. He offered his life physically as a substitute for that other man. But for our everyday lives, that is not exactly what our Lord means by this gospel. What, what he means by this is, you know, if we love ourselves so much that we want to procure something for ourselves, well, how much of that are we willing to give up? And give instead to a neighbor who might need whatever it is we wanted for ourselves better and much more than we do. How much are we willing to get out of our comfort zone to serve the needs of others? How much are we willing to forego our own pleasures and comforts in order to offer it to somebody else who might need it more than we do? So many little things like those are expressions of real love, great love. Because instead of, you know, according those things to ourselves, 
we instead offer it for others and give it to others. Okay? That is the measure of how much we love others. If we're only giving to others something that is in excess of what we already have, okay? oh, I'm willing to part with this because anyway, I have plenty of that. Okay, you can have it. Uh, that's not love. That's not love. I don't know what you want to call that. I don't, I'm not even going to call that charity. Okay, uh, Charity is love, by the way, right? Um, you know, love is measured by the amount of pain that it causes to give. See? That is how you really measure how much you love somebody else. Is it really difficult and painful for you to, to, to attend to that person's needs, to give to that person who needs this kind of help, or to serve this other person? See? You know why it's painful? Because it's more comfortable than just to preserve yourself. Just, you know, not to give yourself a hard time, not to, not to exert too much effort. It's comfortable that way. But if you want to accord that comfort to yourself, and instead of giving it to yourself, you give it to your neighbor. Now that is love. That is the way we love our neighbor. Because we could have had these things for ourselves, who we love too much. But instead of doing that, we give it to our neighbor. That is the way, the measure that our Lord says we should love our neighbor. And the best place to exercise this kind of love is first and foremost here in the family. Right? Here. Your neighbors are your own siblings. How are we living up to what our Lord tells us here? Love God first. And that love for God translates in love for neighbor. How? Because your neighbor is the face of God. And it is your neighbor who becomes the object of that best that you do every day in your lives. Right? They're the ones who benefit from doing your best in your everyday lives. Doing the best in your studies, the best in your chores, the best in helping in the house, the best in helping your, 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 your siblings and whatever they need. You do your best in all of that. You're doing that towards a neighbor, towards your siblings, towards the family. Okay? Because the family, your siblings, your neighbors are the face of God on earth. They are the objects of that service that you render to God, but through your neighbor. Okay? So this is a summary of and the explanation to this great commandments. Of love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. By serving your neighbor who you should love as yourself. Okay, that's it for us folks. Whew, sorry, it's a very long commentary. but Well, it's the greatest commandment, right? So it deserves a lot of airwaves. Okay, well, thank you very much for being uh, accompanying us this morning. Goodbye. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. Let us all still pray for all of these fires raging in California. I haven't seen the news, but uh, it looks like uh, it's less, less smoky outside today. So maybe they have controlled a great part of it. But let's continue to pray that, uh, and, and hope that this is the end of it. <clears throat> let's continue to pray for the, uh, for the pandemic. And today, by the way, is a Friday. Uh, I just want to remind you, those of you who have already started to answer the call of Archbishop Cordelione to do a little fast uh, every Friday uh, in order to petition God to put an end to all this pandemic, uh, then I invite you to uh, join me, join us, the rest of us who are performing this, pa uh, oh, sorry, this fast uh, every Friday of the week now. Okay? Yes, Joe. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Joseph here is reminding me tomorrow is the feast of the coronation of the Blessed Virgin Mary as Queen of Heaven and Earth. Tomorrow. So, huh? tomorrow, yeah, Saturday, tomorrow. Very good, Joe, thank you. That's very nice of you. So, uh, maybe from today until tomorrow, the weekend, one other resolution we can do is let's try to improve our praying and rosary. Let's pray the rosary every day. And... Uh, Let's try, to, let's try to honor Our Lady better and better every day as we pray the rosary. Okay, thank you very much.
See you next week. It's a weekend. No commentaries on Saturday and Sunday. So see you next Monday. Bye. Bye.